Okay, I know I need a cameraman, but whatever. Um, so it's getting kind of dark out here, and um, I went ahead and started my um, started my fire, and I got this cover in it just because uh, it's so fragile right now. If it if this wind is blowing right towards me, it'll blow this little flame out. So I'm gonna let that catch as I block it. And then I got a little sage up there. It's going to burn and bless the land. And I got some water. I'm about to go pick out um, some MREs and figure out what I want to eat. Um, and throw those in while I continue to work. Yeah, because it's time to fix this thing. It's, uh, it's been out here for like eight months. And I don't, this, <laughs> don't even get me started. It wasn't made to build, be out, you know, it's a little tent. They come take them, put them out for a second and drop them. This is the converter that went out on me, a piece of sh I'm going to keep the cables and stuff, though. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to eat some oatmeal. Peaches and cream, strawberry and bananas and cream. And then I'll probably just mix it with some more oatmeal to make it bulk. And I think I got, see, I tell you, I was burning some sage today. Um, I think I got some sugar around here somewhere. Uh, I was wondering if I could borrow a cup of brown sugar. <laughs> I know I do, so I'll have to find it. But, um, yeah. What else do I got in here? Ooh, orange flavored fruit. Oh wait, yeah, orange flavored fruit juice. Oh, put that in some water. Oh, I don't know what I do with my sugar. Oh. I don't even know, man. It's got a plow boy tan. Okay, maybe O wasn't the right word. I don't know. Well, I'll find my sugar. Um, those are already kind of sweet, and I got sugars in a whole bunch of the MREs and whatnot, so. Um, but it's literally. I just unpacked it because I wanted to see what was in that box right there, but. It, uh. It ain't nothing special. Oh, it might be in here with my Cristal's hot sauce and the granola and stuff. That there is a possibility. Aunt Jemima's, you gotta have some flapjacks. Cristal's, gotta have, you know what I'm saying, that Louisiana hot sauce for that hot sauce and salami. I love to eat, eat, eat hot sauce and salami. I love to eat, eat, eat hot sauce and salami. Um, I mean, there's little sugars in there, but no, that's not it. That's not it. Dude, seriously? This is kind of boo-boo Jenkins. But anyways, yeah. I think I'm going to eat oatmeal. Something simple. You know this stuff is going to go bad anytime soon, so... Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna say oatmeal. Let's go see how our fire's doing. It's on now. Sorry, not really. What if I do like this with this? Somebody better call the law. We done took it outside. We're about to brawl. Oh, boy, to put his hands on the woman where I come from, son. The next thing coming is a ass whooping in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. That fire's doing good. And I ain't gonna run. I'm proud of what I done, so read me my rights. I know, that sounds like a dead dog, huh? It's all right, I don't care. Barn, lock me up. So I'll just fire up this water. I ain't gonna put no MREs up in it. 
usually I would and then they just warm up with the water. Um, I'm gonna just fire up this water and throw it in my little metal canteen cup. That way it can boil. Well, I had it through the great behind a good daddy and husband is doing time. Said his wife and the kids was in the household. Boy broke in, man, it all went south when he on his 45 and now he's in the pen 25 to lie. I hate to say it, but if it had been me, read me my rights. Well, he uses Tupperware, but I don't want it to burn. Anyways, I'm going to go get back to work. I'll find my stuff when I need it. That's going. I'm going to throw a, a log or two in there. That kind of hurt that like poke my foot. Mm hmm. What's me? I'm telling you, there's booby traps everywhere. You gotta watch out for these booby traps. <laughs> no joke. And it's kind of hard to hold your gun in your work bags. But I'll tell you what, I asked somebody earlier, I was like, yo, do you think um, I'm having cognitive dissidence? Um, which means like false thoughts or whatnot. Look at that, though. It just keeps getting more beautiful and beautiful. Um, I said, because I, I, I've tried to like leave my gun in the car, I'll walk five feet. I'll turn around, go get my gun, I'll be like, I don't need my gun. You know what I'm saying? Well, like 10 feet, yeah, I turn, fuck this. I ain't going nowhere without my gun. You know what I'm saying? So I grabbed my gun and I was talking to uh, my friend in church today. And he was like, no, no, that's not. That's not hypervigilance from the military. That's just being smart. He goes out there where you are. You are not the top of the food chain. So, yeah, no. He goes, I wouldn't be out there without a weapon. So, and that's coming from, you know, folk that have been around here for three decades now. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, so, no, I'm not crazy. I ain't going, <laughs> I ain't, I ain't walking around without my, uh, rifle y'all think that i'm crazy but uh or you know just whatever i mean i am crazy i did jump out of perfectly good airplanes for a living but uh this year ain't crazy i i just want to make sure i wasn't crazy because i couldn't i couldn't bring myself to like leave my gun i'm like look i ought to be able to just walk away go build some shit but no no and i don't advise it's not a military thing i don't advise any of this is my humble opinion. I don't advise you guys to go out into the middle of the woods without some sort of defense mechanism. Let's just put it that way. Um, whatever makes you feel comfortable may or may not be sufficient. That's on you. But you ain't going to catch me or any of my family members out in the middle of the woods untouched trying to settle the land ain't none of me and my folks gonna be out here without something and i'll tell you when i'm heading home when i run out of rounds <laughs> when i run out of rounds and money to buy more rounds that's when i go home but uh that's about it no i'm i'm done so like i said i'm gonna throw a log on this right here actually I like this one because it's still kind of alive and it's kind of wet so it'll burn for a little while and I got fired and caught it's nice and hot and I got a lot of juniper trees around here and juniper trees are bomb for burning a lot of boys love burning juniper but um me I don't I haven't built a preference but I'm gonna take their advice when they say juniper is good for burning wood I'm gonna say juniper is good for burning wood he actually looked and he was like, hey, man, you got a lot more trees than I thought you had. Because um, I guess there's not too many places that ain't been uh, logged already. But my land's so old that they ain't quite got to it. So uh, when I took that video y'all could see earlier and I'm in the tree looking around, he was like, damn, no, that's a lot more than I was thinking. So, And it's not like it's, you know, you're going to make a whole bunch on logging it, but... If I can get somebody to come in here and log out the area that I want and make, pfft, I don't even care if it's a couple hundred dollars. That's two hundred dollars more than I had in my pocket, and they just cleared the place for me. You know what I mean? So, 
it just is kind of like a win-win situation. So, um, I'm kind of thinking about that because they have to pay you, uh, they have to pay you a hundred percent of the contract in advance before they can log one log. And that's just to keep them from making a mess of your land and taking off and not paying you. And so if they don't clean that up, then you just get another logging company and they have to pay you 100% of their contract to, uh, before they can start touching it either. So uh, it's, it's like a catch-22 so they don't just back out of the deal and leave your logs all over the land. They have to stick to the deal because they already paid for it. And if they don't want to, then you make money and you get somebody else to do it. Or they just say, hey, it's too hard because I don't, you know, I just cut this quarter mile road out myself. So it's not like this is no paved row for me. It ain't, it ain't never going to be paved. If I have more rocks, they might get some inch, half inch uh, rock and just sprinkle it in so I can have just something smooth. Because right, I don't have a tractor. But a lot of these rocks are kind of like loosening up um, from driving over them. So I'll be able to use my pickaxe and uh, take them out. But I'm going to continue with the layout and whatnot. I just want to show y'all how to, you know, get your fire going and how to baby that bad boy until it really um, catches. And then you can throw something else in there. But um, like I said, I like my little, people say, no, plastic, whatever, dude. I like my little plastic because freaking it acts like napalm. And as you can see, everything's in there is on fire. And that's going to take a little while to burn because, like I said, it's still got some moisture. So, anyways, uh, that's about it. Cheers. Oh, this stuff is dangerous.